And so that's the nature of the beast on our side is that very often we are having to make our pitch to people that don't have the clinical side of the business. And that's where having a broad knowledge about deal structure and an understanding of what motivates somebody that's on the supply chain side of thing or on the purchasing side of things. All right, what's up vlog? Back again. Uh, before we get started on this video, uh, I wanted to give a shout out to new sponsor of the channel, Burgers Bagels. Uh, Burgers in the hizzy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we are not sponsoring the channel. Um, I just stopped here for breakfast. I am on the road. Uh, we am over in Iowa, actually. Uh, we've got a pretty big RFP going on at uh, one of the well-known big hospital establishments for arthroscopic video. Uh, and so that's my responsibility. So I am over here uh, for a couple of days doing um, kind of supporting supporting this RFP. So it's uh, two days in a row, five hours in the morning each day where we have our equipment on site uh, to walk through and present to uh, clinicians, staff members, surgeons, um, supply chain, materials management, any and everyone involved uh, with making a decision about uh, arthroscopic video. So that's what I got going this morning. So it's 6.15, got my burgers in the house. Uh, and got, uh, if you guys are in Iowa, you already know, but I got hooked up back there uh, with some, sorry, going through an intersection, try not to kill myself, uh, hooked up with some Big Grove Brewing, if you guys know, uh, my, one of my wife's cousins works for them, so they are a fantastic brewery in uh, Illinois, in Illinois, in Iowa, so if you're in the area, check them out, check them out, you guys know, if you live, the, if you live here, you already know. Um, they are legit and they've got an awesome spot uh, here in Iowa City so um, yeah that's uh, that's what we got going this morning so I'm headed over right now to the hospital and um, I'll be camped out for about five hours uh, essentially just walking through and presenting and discussing uh, any and every detail we have about our uh, arthroscopic video system you know I think I was setting up yesterday and one of the things I was thinking about um, that might be useful is uh, how do you sell something when you don't have a strong clinical advantage and that's just the reality of the industry right now it's fantastic it's it's the best when you have a product that has a strong clinical advantage however there's so many products in the marketplace that there's no real clinical difference between you and the next person and so the reality is with video, you know, a number of years ago it was, well, did you get <laughs> upgrade from Xenon light source to LED? And did you upgrade from, you know, 780p to 1080p image? And then it was 4K and then now it's, you know, true 4K front to back. And all four of the vendors that are doing and involved in this RFP for video have 4K video front to back. And if you lined everybody up next to each other, it's probably pretty hard to tell a clear difference between who's got the best image, the best clinical video equipment on the market. So the question is, okay, how do I go get that business? How do I make a case that they should be going with us when I don't have, it's not that mine is any worse. It's just, it's, it's hard to make a strong clinical sale um, on you know, that type of product. At that point, it comes down to, and I was talking about the, with the rep about this uh, yesterday as we were kind of going through this. At that point, it comes down to deal structure, comes down to ease of use with the staff, comes down to do they feel about good about you as the company and the person that's going to be servicing them. It's much more about those types of things as to why they would get the deal, we would get the deal, and much less on, well, because our video is X better. You know, it, it has better resolution, better image Please quality. They're going to the get, the they're going to get better Please clinical outcomes. Ticket. Like Please enter it's hard to make that case when 
there's not a real strong clinical advantage. So it comes down to one of our benefits is space saving in the OR. You know, we, we have essentially two boxes that we can run Shaver Pump RF and our entire three-in-one video system. That eliminates for some of these places in a place like this where they put everything on booms, that eliminates the need for them to roll in a separate arthroscopy cart because we have it all on their boom system. So you're eliminating a cart in the AOR, that's a benefit. Uh, surgeon profiles, that's a benefit. Um, and then it comes down to, well, what other spend do the accounts have with us? Is there a, an amount of spend that they have right now that would justify them going with us? Whether that's we could reduce some pricing on the other things that they have. You know, if you buy our video, we will, you know, adjust uh, the pricing of X implant accordingly. Or, you know, maybe we set up a rebate program of some sort where, you know, if you if you do this with us at the end of the year, we'll do X based on you hitting a certain volume tier. Or, you know, there's an infinite number of ways to kind of structure financially a deal like this, but. Each deal comes down to you've got a clinical component, you've got a financial component. When you don't have a clear clinical advantage, then you have to come down to a financial component or, and I guess I would put in clinical component like ease of use and, um, you know, for both the clinical staff that's setting up the equipment or space saving or things like that. I guess that would be, I don't know, maybe that's a third one. Maybe it's clinical, financial, and uh, ease of use we'll call it uh but really those are the those are the areas to focus on because um you know that's what would then make or break a deal for you so um anyway figured i'd share that because that's that's something we run into routinely um so i got my burgers represent and uh yeah i'm gonna eat this real quick scarf down this uh <laughs> breakfast bagel and uh and run into the uh into the hospital so i'll catch up with you guys later all right, vlog, checking back in. Um, was at the hospital all morning from about 6.30 to 12.30, and um, then bounced out of there. Uh, went back to the hotel, grabbed some lunch, and, uh, or left and grabbed some lunch, and now I am headed to uh, just a Starbucks to get some work in. Um, so it, uh, it was a good morning. We uh, demoed our equipment for a number of uh, surgeons and staff members. And what I had mentioned this morning is the difficulty in um, selling a product that is hard to make a true clinical advantage. Uh, you've got to find other techniques and ideas and ways that your system and your solution benefits them. That's not just because this is going to give you better patient outcomes or this is going to do X for you because when you stack up video equipment, a lot of it's very similar at this stage. So it comes down to deal structure, it comes down to the financial side of things, it comes down to ease of use for the staff, it comes down to kind of the things around not just the clinical side that can benefit them. So, you know, we have a three-in-one system, so in theory you're taking three separate boxes into one which saves space in the operating room and they use boom systems so it can you know that they'll be able to fit more equipment on their booms things like that are how you're going to be able to try to paint the value prop um, the other difficult thing that we deal with in this industry and it definitely on the on the capital side of the business less so on the implant side but it's still there is you have a lot of people that work at the hospital that are involved in decisions about products like these. But these people don't have a clinical background. They don't really understand what's going on in the operating room. They don't understand if you tell them this is what a shaver and a burr and a wand is, this is what a video tower is. This, you know, they have a very, very high level understanding. But if you give them any details, they are kind of lost in the weeds yet they are involved in these decisions. And maybe they should be, maybe they shouldn't be. That's not, here's, that's not for me to decide. Um, but you have these people in supply chain and um, you know, inventory management side of things that they're doing a desk job or working at a computer or doing spreadsheets or looking at you know, analyses on the numbers and they're, you know, they see line items, but they don't really understand how the whole thing goes together. They, are involved in decisions around you know what a facility does for video equipment or you know shiver pump rf 
and those two products in particular we are presenting today. And it can be difficult to try to help them understand what the value proposition is if there's some unique value prop that is not obvious to somebody that doesn't understand the procedure that's being done. And so that's the nature of the beast on our side is that very often we are having to make our pitch to people that don't have the clinical side of the business. And that's where having a broad knowledge about deal structure and an understanding of what motivates somebody that's on the supply chain side of thing or on the purchasing side of things. You know, like I can outline my clinical benefit of my system, but number one, to say they don't really care is probably not necessarily true. They may care, but they're not graded on, they're not evaluated on if they're bringing the best clinical product to market. They're evaluated on making sure that good financial decisions are being made, that the facility is not losing money, that they're putting in place good partnerships with companies and organizations. And, you know, so they're trying to merge with a clinician that says, okay, this, this, and this company is acceptable on the clinical side. You tell me what the better play is financially. And that's where they come in. And so understanding that, you know, when you're in these meetings, having these conversations, you may want to be able to touch on the clinical side to say, this is why ours is better. or These are the things that we can do that somebody else can't. But then understanding, okay, what is this person that just sit down, sat down in this meeting? You know, as an example today, he was in supply chain and he was filling in for somebody that was supposed to be there, but he doesn't know anything about, you know, really anything that we were talking about. And so trying to educate him and bring him up to speed about what is a video system? What should they care about when they're evaluating video? Looking at Shaver Pump RF, what is it that we can do that nobody else can't? Why is that different? Does anybody else have what we have, etc.? You're literally teaching somebody for the first time about your system. And this person is gonna have at some level, and he's not obviously the final decision maker, but at some level he's gonna have some influence in the outcome of these decisions. And so I think it's easy from the outside to look at medical sales as, well, it's, this is purely a clinical role, or you just have to have the uh, clinical knowledge or lingo and be able to talk and sell to physicians and surgeons and things like that. But a lot of our job, especially on the capital side of the business, is being able to sell to people that don't understand the clinical side of the business, or at least not very well, or the clinical value of the product. They're much more a standard, you know, X's and O's, financial models, business and deal structure to make this financially advantageous for them. Looking at contracts, looking at their GPO, what is on contract? If we do this, how does that change any other agreements we have in different areas? Is this, you know, if we go with X company, is this tied to something that they already have in the facility? Those, anything in that space, that's what the people like that are gonna care most about. And so any, you know, and I found this with, even today, you start talking about the clinical side of things and it just like glosses over, you know? Number one, it's not that they don't care, but that's not their wheelhouse. They, they're not paid to understand those things. They're paid to make good financial decisions and try to use what they have known in their experience and their understanding of financial modeling and or um, maybe not necessarily financial modeling, but looking at GPO contracts, looking at prices, looking at um, deal structure, what can we do if we, you know, do this under some sort of agreement or we going to do a cash pay or we're going to lease it out if we do a you know fmv loan on it what does that look like etc that's where they can actually get involved in and give you feedback in real time on a on a good conversation but it's so easy to lose those people if you start only going down the clinical side and so having multiple talk tracks based around the type of people that we interact with is i mean you have to be able to do that um so that's a little I guess, window into what things look like, um, you know, on the ground in the field. So, all right, I will uh, catch back with you guys later. All right, vlog, uh, end of the day here. It is 9.45. I've literally been working on uh, the medical sales stuff, the website, and uh, I've got a new website that I've been working on for a while um, that I will, provide some more information on shortly. But uh, honestly, one of the best things about uh, being on the road is 
actually having time to work on these types of things versus running around with kids, which is great and I miss them, but uh, it's also nice to be able to have some time to work on these projects. So anyway, um, I've been doing this for probably like three and a half, four hours straight. So it's about time to hit the bed and um, start early in the morning tomorrow. All right, we'll see you guys in the next episode.